Awesome. So let's go to this next episode, Hearthbreakers. Um, again, so Heartswarming Eve, it's pretty much like the same as, as Christmas. Um, but they have to make it, you know, uh, culturally biased or stable or whatever. So that it's acceptable in all countries and, and all that good stuff. And so what happens is, you know, remember Applejack and Pinkie Pie, like they think they're related. And so they're really close to each other and they want to have like familial collection, connections um, and be like really deeply interweaved with one another's lives. And so in this episode, what, what happens is the apples, you know, they leave their farm, right? And... They come on over to Pinkie Pie's family. So Pinkie Pie's family, remember, they live on a rock farm. And so I don't really know, but they farm rocks. So I guess that's cool. Um, and so they come over to the Pinkie, right, the, to the pies, right? And these are like very different families. And so um, there's a couple of, you know, big differences to come up. But the, the point with this all right and the point with you know sharing you know the family traditions and sharing this holiday and sharing festivities is that they want to have fun together they want to bond together and it's all you know good-hearted quality spirit okay Does that make, so like it's pretty you know fundamental basic stuff and so they go on this train and while they're on this train Pinkie Pie and Applejack are talking and they're super, super excited because they've got gifts for each other. They've got gifts for their families. I mean, it's like basically, you know, it's like Christmas time, right? And so they're having, you know, the most fun possible. Um, and they're like super, super excited. And it's just, it's just awesome, awesome stuff. And so they go and they go and they go and they go and they're like pumped up, getting ready. And as they get to the Apple Farm or to the to Pinkie Pie's, to their family's rock farm, right? And so you've got like Pinkie Pie's mom, her dad, her sister, um, and then her other sister. And they're like all totally opposites of Pinkie Pie because like they're like just like so stiff and rigid and oh my god, it's 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 so funny. And, and then you've got the Apple family, right? And so um, definitely not five people. <laughs> um, they, they come together and the apples, they're like super excited. And the pies, they're like super excited. And the biggest difference between the two is their traditions. And that kind of shows uh, kind of pretty quickly, right? So Apple Jack, you know, like she's used to like a normal Christmas, a normal celebration and like lights everywhere, presents, all that great stuff. But with the pie family, what they do is they take them into their home, they house them, they feed them, and they, they you know, they come and they bond and they break bread over dinner, except instead of bread, um, they have like rock soup, which is just like, I don't know, it, it looked pretty gross and it probably, I mean, it sounds pretty, it's just like soup and then there's like a giant rock in the middle and it's like, dude, I don't know, man. Um, so they make rock soup for like Christmas Eve dinner or something, um, which is just hilarious. And like, they don't have any decorations or, you know, festivities or, or party things whatsoever. Um, it's very, very basic, basic things. Um, there's like no ornaments, no trees, nothing like that. And so Applejack, like she's like she's so used to like a normal Christmas, right? So in her world, you know, there's decorations everywhere, and there's this big Christmas tree, and everybody puts their presents under the Christmas tree. Um, and for these guys, what they do is they like go and they hide their presents in the middle of the rock farm and just like hide them. And so it's it's a very, very different family tradition than she's used to and so what she does is, is really interesting she doesn't really like directly talk to everybody about it she just kind of talks with Pinkie Pie she's, and asks her like what their family does and how they go this way and why they act this way um, and she just doesn't understand it and so what she does is, is a little bit of a problem she has to force her culture force her history and force what she thinks makes the correct you know holiday onto the apples, right? So in the middle of the night, like she gets up and she like puts giant candy canes all over the place and puts up a huge tree and I mean puts lights everywhere, gifts everywhere, just like it's like a giant party, right? Um and the the pies wake up the next day and they walk outside and they see all these decorations that, that Apple Jack is like forced onto them, right? Like that she didn't ask, like they didn't want this right or else they would have had it and it wasn't part of like what they cared about and so they come into this situation just totally berserk and out of the ordinary 
and it's just crazy. So they get up and they say, well, what are you doing? What's going on, right? And they do not like it one bit. Um, they're like just upset and they're not a fan whatsoever. And then what's really bad is the pies, they have this giant boulder, this huge, huge, huge rock um, towards like the edge of their you know, farm. And then there's a huge cliff right next to it. And there's like this huge candy cane that Applejack stuck in the ground. And she put it like right along a fault line apparently. So this fault line cracks and then it, it, it destroys the foundation for where the boulder's standing. And then all of a sudden, ah, uh, the boulder falls into this giant pit. Um, and just, it crashes and it's, it's huge, just so deep down. It's like a huge cavern it just fell into. And it's just awful, right? And so now they've got to like, they, they just, the, the pie family gets so upset and so mad and they just push the apples away because it just clashes so, so, so much with who they are and their tradition and their culture. Um, and they have no way to agree with them, no way to accept them, which is just awful. It's a terrible, terrible place for them to be in, but they're trapped here just because they tried to force their traditions, they tried to force themselves onto them. They cared too much. And because of that, they alienated themselves and they destroyed the connection that could have been with the family, the connection that should have been and that they desired so, so deeply, but it just wasn't able to happen on the first try. And so they're on their train and the train it's going back home. And as they're leaving, you know, Pinkie Pie and, and Applejack, they feel so bad for each other and they try to ex and they exchange, you know, their their presents to each other. And it's just such a kind, sweet gesture. And they realize that like, you know, they have something that's so so special and they love each other so much. Um they have this super super strong connection. And they want their families to have that same connection. And she realizes that, yeah, she went the wrong way and she, and she shouldn't have tried to force things on them. And that was a mistake. And she realizes that she needs to fix her mistakes. She needs to overcome it. She needs to move on to the next level, the next movement of her life. And so that's exactly what she does. She gets her family, turn right back around, and they go and they help these guys push this boulder up a huge, huge, huge cavern um, back to their home. And then they help clean up all the crap that they brought and they celebrate the whole holiday the way that they celebrate the holiday. They embrace it from their point of view and they do what they want to do, part of the same movement. And so as they grow together, as they connect, they bring the families together, they bring the coops together, and they have a tremendous, tremendous impact. And all of this stuff at the beginning that separated them, they forget about it. It falls away, it flows away. And they connect, they get rid of all the problems. The problems decay, everything falls away and they become a unified group, right? They join together. And even though it's not 100% like a medium middle ground, a balance between them, at the beginning, they realize that they're on the way, they're on the path, they're going and going and going, and they get closer and closer over time as this happens over and over again to a middle ground, right? Where they can start to slowly interweave their traditions and what they love to do into their daily actions and into their rituals and their techniques and that happens over time, right? Because it's a slow, gradual process to combine the two and bring them into a unity, right? And so you just have to be a little bit more patient with the process, especially when you have like two groups coming together with families or, or whatever. You just have to take the path that the other person sees. Look through their eyes and try to approach situations from their point of view so they can have you know, what they're comfortable with at the beginning. Because the whole goal, right, is comfort. And you want to erase all signs of negativity or confusion or discomfort or anything that would alienate them from you at the beginning. Because at the beginning, it's just about that initial connection. And then the instant you have that, you start to grow and grow and grow because you have a solid foundation set for the entirety of the relationship, which is so, so, so powerful. And it all stems here uh, from their ability to, to, you know, take a temporary, you know, they're not going to have their Christmas lights or their Christmas trees, a temporary loss of celebration because they know that in the long term it's worth so much more to have this long-term friendship and these long-term familial connections that are going to fundamentally change everything for them, which is so, so, so powerful. So, yeah, sweet.
Awesome. So Scare Master. Oh, this one's so fun. Okay, so for, it's like Halloween again, and like Fluttershy like despises Halloween. Um, and so usually what she'll do is she'll just go to her home and she'll hide in her bedroom with all of her, her animals. And she'll just get under her bed and hide like the entire night because she doesn't want to be out getting you know scared and it's just not her thing right she's super shy and so that's what she like just every single time and the problem is bunny her 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 bunny angel like wants carrots and he's like a little spoiled bunny um and like she runs out of carrots on you know uh a halloween night and so she's like freaking out she has no clue what to do um and she goes out She's got to get this guy carrots or he's going to like freak out, um, which is just berserk, but it's just how it happens. And so she leaves her home and she goes over to the market like on, <laughs> on Nightmare Night and goes to buy her, you know, some carrots. And as she's here, you know, getting carrots, um, she, she gets the carrots real quick. She wants to get home as fast as possible. She does not want to be around everyone dressed up, trying to scare people. Um, the main six are still there. So, like, she sees all her friends, and her friends are like, oh, my gosh, you're out here on, on you know, Nightmare Night. Wow, that's so cool. Great job, Fluttershy. She's like, no, no, I just want to get this bunny. I got to go home. I'm scared. I don't want to be here. But just by the pure fact that she is here, it shows that she's what? She's expanding her boundary. She's stepping outside of her comfort zone. She's trying new things. And so her friends see that and they commend it and they say, okay, sure, sure, sure. But why don't you try just a little bit? And so they convince her, you know, to give it a shot. So she goes back home and she sets up like a haunted dinner party for them. Um, and it's just like a fun thing she does. It's kind of her first try, like ever basically having any sort of of um, you know scaring experience like whatsoever um, and so all of her friends come over and the, the main six are you know, around her table um, and she hides behind like a couch and she's trying to like scare them you know and and you know uh, project her voice over like a little tin can system um, and you know get them going uh, the problem is like it doesn't you know really work she, she's just not a very effective like you know haunted party host and it's just doesn't work really well and so her friends you know they all basically leave and they say all right Fluttershy that's cool well we're gonna go and have some fun and, and do some real things and so they just kind of walk around they have a fun night and Fluttershy is kind of sad because she's like she wanted to have fun with her friends and she really really liked being with them but she just wasn't able to have the impact that she wanted with them so she sits back and she thinks okay well what can she do to really connect with them um, and so they go over to you know this this maze uh, at Applejack's right they have this like corn maze right and she sees her chance she says okay cool 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 let's see what I can do here and as most people go through the corn maze they just go through like the boring stuff that the Apple family sets up and there's like you know people jump out and they get scared and it's fun and, and all that great stuff uh, so what Fluttershy does is she takes that and she kind of like pumps it up, pumps it up on steroids and goes super, super hard with it because she is like 100% serious that it is going to happen. And so like they get into the maze and there's like this tree and so there's this hole in the, tr in the ground and she, like she leads them into like this underground tunnel and then she like brings them through this scary, evil pathway and and then there's like this like dead body of of their of uh, granny smith like in a rocking chair and they think it's like granny smith right so they come up and they're like oh granny smith what's going on and then they turn around and it's like a skeleton and she's dead and it's like ah. <laughs> and uh and then after that she releases like this huge bear to chase them like through this underground cavern um into like a dead end and they have to like they all get like trapped in this ginormous spider web and twilight has to like teleport them out of this huge spider web um all of them to the other side before the bear like mauls into them and like kill and like crushes them um and they get out like just in the neck of time and he gets stuck in the net and like it's like some legit like dangerous stuff which is just insane and so they go through that and then they escape onto this platform at the top and as they get to this platform overlooking the maze 
they realize that like they're in some deep stuff. Um, they're all standing here, and Fluttershy's on this tree, and she like is disguised as Flutterbat from the Bats episode where she became like a huge bat, and she's like flying around as a giant bat and swooping in over them and like like <laughs> almost cuts like Spike's costume because um, Spike has like this dragon costume as a dra it's it's like insane on um, like legitimate danger like threatening them um, and and she she steps back and she looks at you know her friends faces and she realizes that like they are in horror and terror and they have no clue what's going on they're so so scared out of their pants it's insane and so she goes back to herself right she she winds back a little bit see at the beginning she was normal you know chilling out scared normal flutter shy not very assertive but her friends they inspired her they gave her this inspiration to go out here and do more and be more and and try to get into a new situation. So that's really exactly what she does. And so she, she puts on this huge show for them, um, much, much better than her, her little tea party, uh, her haunted tea, whatever, haunted tea party. And now she's here with legitimate plans, actual action and danger, and like awesome, awesome, awesome things for them. But she sees them quivering in front of her in total fear. She sits down and she says, I can't do this. I don't want to hurt you guys. This is mean. And then these guys realize that it's Fluttershy and they freak out. Like they can't believe it for a moment because remember, this is the one, this is the girl who was giving them like a tea party in the dark as haunting it. And, and like the most held back person in the entire town who didn't even want to go outside on Nightmare Night, on, on Halloween. And um, now she's had this massive shift to becoming an extremely, extremely effective scare master. Um, and it's just such a huge transformation. It shows the ability that when you put your mind to something and you go hard, hard, hard to get it done, you can make anything you desire a reality and happen. And for her, she had never done anything like this in her life. Nada, right? But she makes it happen and she scares the daylights out of these guys and does an amazing Amazing, amazing job because, and only because, she goes out there and fully applies herself and makes it happen. Um, and her friends, they think it's amazing. They can't believe it. Um, and they're also just like super scared and don't want to threaten Fluttershy anymore. And they kind of leave her to do her own thing because they seriously like underestimated her ability to make a drastic and immediate shift from a previous failure to a current success. And it was so, so, so powerful. And it all stemmed from her internal ability to sort of awaken like this side of her that she never focused on before, but now she could do it because she was pushed. She had a little bit of pressure and that pressure combined with an immediate deadline of you know midnight that night of being able to scare people, pushed her to perform and to create the output she needed to have massive, massive impact and success, which is super cool, super cool. Um, so yeah, all right, what about Discord? Okay, <laughs> so Twilight, she spends like the whole weekend, one weekend, just like organizing books in her library, um, which is totally cool, I guess. Um, and so as she's here going like super hard and she's got Spike sort of, but Spike, you know, he's just helping her out. Um, he's just organizing like every single book. I don't really know, man. This is like pre-Google, I guess, but whatever. Um, and so she's got, she spends like two days organizing all these books. And then she comes out and she finds, you know, her friends. She finds the main six. And all of her friends are hanging out with Discord, right? And so, ooh. What's weird is like, you know, Discord has never really been great friends with anyone except for Fluttershy, right? Um, and so... She comes out of this, this, this book sorting two-day venture thing, and these, these guys are, like, cracking up. They're, like, just the funniest thing ever. They think uh, of Discord, right? They all are, like, praising Discord. It's the coolest guy ever, the funniest guy ever. Um, and it's just amazing, amazing. They're all the best friends of, of, of all time, and they have had the best weekend of their whole lives. Um, and it's pretty obvious, like, Discord has, like, done this to make Twilight feel excluded, which is, you know, exactly what happens. So, you know, Twilight 
she she's just doing her own thing and she's like well what do you mean you guys had the best time ever and these guys like they're cracking up at every single thing he says um and just like exploding it's like they think he's the funniest guy on the planet um and so like because of that the twilight's like well what's up you know i want to see what happened and, and figure out what happened and you know at the beginning discord's like well you just kind of had to be there to figure it out um but then he says okay well what we'll do for you, Twilight, is we'll work the whole thing out over again. Um, sort of like to mock her, but also to a greater extent, to sort of push her buttons, right? Because he's really, really, really trying to get under her skin in this scene and see how she's going to react, um, which is kind of not the nicest thing to do. And so, you know, everyone keeps showing up with this court and saying he's the coolest, you know, funniest guy ever, always laughing at all his jokes. And so he has Twilight, like, walk through exactly what they did that weekend situation by situation like scientific method kind of thing where they set up you know an exact like lunchtime situation or an exact um dinner or, or some kind of joke that they did over that weekend and twilight sits back and you know she just like watches and says okay cool gotcha and takes notes on what they're doing and they take a very like literal approach to like, what's this? What makes this funny? How did this happen? Blah, 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 blah. And like, what they realize is like, it doesn't really work very well um, trying to recreate, you know, a spur of the moment uh, joke, right? Like you can't recreate the now of the past, right? So this idea of like the past, the now, and the present. And like, they have all these experiences from the now, and it's difficult for them to recreate them now that, you know, they're in the past. Um, it's just like this emotional state, this idea that, you know, humor and, and especially like high emotion peak energy states are very like emotionalized thoughts or are transferred between the two, right? And so there's this connection between the individuals and the live action process of the mastermind that brings them into an elevated peak state of performance. And more specifically, like these connection that they have is much, much, much deeper because they know that it's real and it's legitimate and it's genuine and wholesome when it's happening as a real, you know, in real time. And so as Twilight tries to come in and recreate these scenes, it just doesn't work because it's not the same sense uh, of persona, the same, you know, realism uh, as the actual event happening. And so Twilight, she goes back to her castle um, and she's in her room, it's the throne room, and she's just a little bit sad because she doesn't know what's going on. And she's having a really, really tough time connecting with her friends and figuring out, you know, why they're all the best friends with Discord. Uh, whereas, you know, she's not, right? Because she wasn't there, which is, you know, a shame. And so, you know, Discord comes in and he's really like taunting this over Twilight. And he's sort of like ignoring, you know, the fact that she just wasn't even, she didn't even have a chance to be there. Um, and she, she was working so hard. And she wasn't in any situations. And so what he does is he keeps doing the same jokes over and over and over again that everyone thinks are hilarious um, in front of Twilight trying to like taunt her and make her you know get on edge a little more and push her out of the group right sort of alienate her because she doesn't know maybe the secret jokes that um, they had and so because of that like these guys kind of realize they, they like catch on and they say dude you're just kind of like taunting her and it's you know not a nice thing to do and so they, they kind of come over and they side with their friend Twilight and they say, look, this is like bogus, right? You can not just like alienate people and push them away. It's not a nice thing to do. Um, and, and he's really, really trying here to go against Twilight. And that's just not the strat. That's a bad idea. And it absolutely crushes his position of authority, his position of friendship, his position. You know, just, just this whole connection with the group is, is fundamentally, you know, fading away because he pushes it too far. He goes too hard and he cares way too much about removing Twilight from this experience and crushing her. And so like he has this huge initial spurt of like popularity and friendship, but it, it falls and falls and falls and falls because it was built not on a strong foundation, but on total bogus designed in his mind only to alienate Twilight and push her away. And so Twilight kind of gives him like a taste of his own medicine. And then they start just laughing at their own jokes over and over and over again in front of Discord that he doesn't understand. And he realizes how it feels for there to be this huge, you know, mastermind, this social group where everyone is connected. 
And then he is trapped on the outside as an outsider looking in, unable to decipher what's really going on. The exact same position that Twilight was in, they put him in. And they make him realize that like, you know, it's so simple and people hear it all the time, yet they, it's called like the golden rule, right? This idea that you treat others the way you want to be treated. Like, it's, and everybody knows, like, oh, of course, treat others the way you want to be treated. But, like, it works so freaking well, and it's so powerful. And if you just do that, if you just treat others the way you want to be treated, everything changes. Like, if I call someone, do I want them to answer? Yeah. If someone calls me, do they want me to answer? Yes. I will treat them the way they want me to be treated, or the way I want to be treated, right? Um, and so, like, you've got to connect with people and do to them what you would do to yourself. You wouldn't alienate yourself. You wouldn't push yourself away. You wouldn't mock yourself. You would never, never, I don't know a single person on the planet who would push themselves away from their group of friends. And that's why they have to make a shift. They have to make a change. And he needs to stop alienating them just and so twilight they give him a taste of his medicine and he realizes that it's the wrong thing to do that he feels bad about it and he says the only reason he did it was to get a feeling of significance and it's not freaking worth it because it doesn't have that long-term payoff it just does not work that way um and that's how it fades away and he goes away and they have to come back as a group come back as a team and realize that the only way for them to all grow together efficiently and effectively is as a collective group that does not isolate individual members because individuals have so much less power than the overarching group. So you got to move together as a team that's unified and never, 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 really, you, you just don't want to try to push yourself above others. You want to come together as a group and you want to increase the status of the team as a whole together, not on a one-on-one -on -one basis. It's, it's all, it's the whole mastermind together. It's all together. You got to stay with teamwork and friendship. Okay, cool. So the Hoofields and the McColts. So pretty like cool, cool, cool. So you got like one hill over here and one hill over here. And Twilight gets called here with, from the map with, with Fluttershy, right? And so on this hill are the Hoofields. And on this field, a hill are the McColts. And so like basically you've got these, these two societies, these two groups of people. And the Hoofields, they're super good at farming, right? And so they like, that's their thing. Their thing is farming. And the McColts, their thing is building, right? So you can kind of look at the picture. Um, the Hoofields have a ton of plants, pumpkins, stuff like that. And the McColts have a ton of, uh, they have like this huge fort that they built. And they have no trees left because they cut all the trees to build their huge fort. And so you have these two sort of different social groups and they're like fighting all the time. They're always throwing like food and, and cannonballs and stuff back at each other over and over and over again. Twilight and Fluttershy, they're here, they're trying to figure out what's going on and like what's like the problem here because you know, these guys, they don't have any buildings and these guys don't have any food. So like, obviously it's better if they would work together, um, but there's just some sort of problem where like, they just constantly are fighting. Um, and they're, they're launching stuff over across back and forth. And then they're also sending like Trojan horses and they're having like physical in-person attacks on each other. And to the extent that they can show violence in, in like PG show, like they, like they go inside on a Trojan horse inside of like a cake and like hide themselves in a cake and then they like spurt out and like throw stuff at everyone and explode their home and destroy their their, their fort and their homes and they come back i mean it's just a serious you know legit it's just they crushing each other and it's awful and so what twilight and, and fluttershy learned is that you know long 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 time ago you know the, these these uh two founders the hooffields and, and the mccall's like they're, they're great 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 grandparents or whatever you know, they came to this land, they were young, and, you know, the Hoofields, he was trying to make, like, his farm, right? And so he came and, like, put out a plot of land and said, hey, we should, like, you know, build some farmland here. And so he started building up some crops um, and, and started farming, right? Because, you know, he really liked farming, and also they needed food to eat to survive. 
So those two kind of worked really well together. And the McCulk guy, um, he decided that, okay, he needed to build a bunch of buildings and he wanted to build a bunch of buildings. So he was really into like architecture and, and stuff like that. And so the problem was they were trying to live sort of in between these two valleys and there was plenty, plenty, plenty of land, um, like without a doubt. Um, but these two, they just kept arguing because they would like, he would like build his houses on top of this guy's land. And this guy would like break down his houses and put farmland there instead. And so like for no good reason whatsoever, they were just constantly at each other's throat, destroying their, their property and taking their land and using it for, you know, what they wanted instead of what the other person wanted. And so it just developed this feud over the years for like, stupid arguments like this is why it's so 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 important to avoid arguments at all costs because it leads to like ridiculously stupid you know conflict where it makes so much sense for these guys to work together you know one of them makes food one of them makes houses that's a pretty good society but they just argue and argue and argue and argue with each other instead and because of that they have these two isolated societies that on a one-on-one basis as individual entities are so significantly less effective than if they would be, you know, combined, right? And so Twilight learns about this and she realizes that like it all stems from some dumb family feud a long time ago. And this argument, this pointless fight is all just a matter of tradition. And so often, you know, we get stuck in bad habits or bad traditions or bad images or just stupid things um, that shouldn't be a problem. But because we're used to them, we do it over and over and over again. And for these guys, that bad habit is like fighting, right? Because their parents fought and their grandparents fought and all they ever know for their whole life is fighting. And they aren't willing to take a step back, look at the situation and say, what's really going on here? What do we need to change here? What do we need to do here? Um, and it's just insane. And so that's exactly what Twilight and, and Fluttershy do. And they say, look, this is bogus. They get both of their attention. They like force them to stop fighting by like literally freezing them in time um, with, with magic. And then they show them like, you know, the world that they're destroying, all the animals that are like dying because um, there's no like fields, there's no cultivation and there's no teamwork. It's just constant battle victory no progress no forward thinking like just no innovation nothing positive comes from these fights yet they still keep doing them just because it's a habit and this is why it's so important um there's this insane book the power of habit this idea that you want to create good habits in your life and then do those good habits over and over and over and over again and completely abolish the negative ones that are detrimental to success and fundamentally crush your overarching growth prospects, which is just awful, right? They, they're like literally limiting the potential of this town, of what it could be way up here, so powerful if they were together. But when they're apart, they're barely half of that, barely a third of that. It's not a zip, zilch because they're doing a great, great, great job. And, and like, this is such a great thing. Like, you'll see people that are like benching like 10,000 pounds and they're like super swole, super buff, but then they never do leg day and they have like the teeniest legs on the planet. That's the exactly what's happening here. Like this society is so good at farming, but they have no infrastructure, no buildings whatsoever. And it's the exact opposite with these guys. And so what do you need to do? Well, what is the weightlifting to do? You need to do upper body and lower body. It's not a difficult interpretation. It's not freaking tough. Um, you gotta do both. And so for these guys, they need to do both. They need to connect and join together to be in unity rather than fighting because as you guys know, one plus one is three. And as they come together in the middle here, they can create such a more effective, happy, cheerful, productive and successful society than either of them could ever possibly hope to accomplish alone. And so that's really uh, what Twilight kind of makes them do. They make them get off these, this hill, destroy the feud, and stop freaking fighting long enough just to sit together for just a moment and get to this peak potential and start to join forces in the middle 
Start to build homes and farms together and work with each other. Work as a team to get crap done together because as soon as they start working together, they have massive, massive, massive success in all aspects of their life because it's 10 times easier for them to get stuff done. They have mastered the art of friendship with one another, which is so, so, so powerful. And it changed everything for both of them for the rest of their lives, which is awesome. All right, awesome. So the main attraction, um, this is like, oh my God, it's so fun. Okay, so Pinkie Pie is like, there's like this huge like party that they're doing. Um, and it's like some charity fundraiser thing. And, and like everyone in town is, is gonna come to this giant party. And the, you know, the, the main attraction, <laughs> the, the big event, um, is this like there's this huge show um, and they're gonna have this band come in uh, or this you know singer come in named Countess Coloratura and she's like the most popular singer ever like in the whole wide world there um, and she's just like the hip singer um, and so you know she arrives and like everybody knows who she is except for Applejack she's never heard of Countess Coloratura she just doesn't I don't know it's music whatever and so Applejack, she sees her come in and, and she comes, so this is like Applejack, I guess. Um, and she comes in like on this like huge like yeah, stage thing and she's got like tons of people carrying her and servants everywhere, like a whole team. Um, and they all come in and they have this huge, huge, huge uh, entrance. And, and Applejack sees her and she recognizes her as, as someone uh, that she, she like went to this summer camp with a long, 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 long time ago. Um, and she called her Ra Ra. And so she sees this old friend and she has like no clue and, and so so then um so she gets here and she she quickly like passes out you know like autographs um and just basic stuff like that and then she quickly goes on stage and does like a quick you know sound check performance whatever um and here's like where she starts at And so she like doesn't recognize her like at all whatsoever. Um, just totally different from the childhood friend that she had when she was just like playing her little guitar. Um, Applejack played guitar and she would like sing with her and they would be together, which was like super, super cool. And they just had a great, great, great time together. Um, it just totally is a complete stark contrast between then and between now where she's got like this cool like she's got like this advanced manager guy and this guy he does like all her audio visual backup dancers all that stuff and it makes her like this huge famous star uh by adding a ton of fizzazz a ton of poof a ton of bam 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 you know extra things uh to her performances and what she does and so because of that it's just it's it's so much you know artificial you know robotic stuff and to Applejack, she doesn't think that that's who Ra Ra is. She doesn't think that's who her friend is, um, and so she, you know, starts to like really dig into this. And um, you know, at the, at the first point, it's like you know, it's this question of is she like jealous of the success or or, or what's really going on here? And she just like doesn't uh, really know uh, at the beginning. And what's cool is like as she moves forward and as she succeeds and as she goes hard, harder, harder, harder uh, with whatever it is she's doing. Rara, like, she remembers her as a kid and just this normal pony, right? And so she's able to connect with her on a much deeper level. And so after all this stuff fades away, um, and everyone goes home and they're getting ready for the, the big, big concert starts in just a couple of days, right? 
um, she, she's talking to her and like they originally were super, super close, but Rara, Rara Kanchkolachura, whatever, um, she, she pushes away from Applejack and she sees Applejack as someone who's just like jealous of her or, or whatever um, because Applejack thinks that her manager, right, is, is using her as like a pawn, right? And so to prove that, what she does is, because like as they were coming in, he was demanding like so freaking much of Pinkie Pie, making her work like 16 hours a day to get like all of these demands met, um, to have like very, very specific like waters and grapes and just all this crap. It was so, so, so extra. Um, so all these material things, right? He makes Pinkie Pie get, and she spends like so much time peeling tons and tons and tons of apples uh, for this guy to give him like everything that he wants so that they'll perform. And so with that in mind, she has this, she puts this guy up to a test, right? And she has Twilight go with him, um, and Twilight, like, broadcasts what goes on. And she, like, rah, rah, she really, really, really cares about, like, kids, right? And charity and school ponies. And so um, Twilight has him come behind the stage. And so she, like, pretends to ask him to cancel the charity event that they have with the school ponies and so he says yes of course you got it let's do it um and then he runs back behind the stage and he tells twilight look um cancel the event with the stupid people or the school school pony i mean it's so so mean offensive um and give me you know a huge massage thing or else she's gonna leave your show and and get out of here and she won't perform for you she won't do anything charitable and everything will be over and like that's the point where where she realizes that this guy has seriously been like using her the whole time as just a person to get what he desires, not necessarily as a, as a quality relationship to get you know a, an overarching growth for both of them. It's really been you know he's been having this huge huge like growth for himself, but in the long term he's sacrificing it all and it all gets destroyed and crushed because it's not built on solid foundations. He's building this relationship on total bogus. And so as it starts to grow and grow and grow, it falls over and it gets destroyed very, very, very quickly. And so because of that, she like basically gets left out on her loan. Um, and this, he leaves, he takes all her dancers, all the technology, all the music, all the blast, shabam, um, and it's just gone. It goes away just like that. Um, because she goes back to her core, she goes back to her roots, she goes back to her principles, and she lives her life on her terms and does what she desires to do. Um, and so it works pretty well at the beginning, and then she like freaks out, right? So she's got to perform on this huge stage for all these people. And um, as she's going through this process, she's like freaking out behind stage uh, with Rarity and with Applejack and with her friends, because she has no clue like what to do. And so what she realizes is she's just got to be herself. She needs to do her. And she needs to perform as her own. And so that's exactly what she does. She walks out on the stage, gets in front of a piano, um, and just blows away. Let's listen to that. show you who I am Throw off the veil, it's finally time There's more to me than glitz and glam oh, oh. And now I feel my stars align For I had believed what I was sold I did all
strike the magic inside of you. And so at the end of the day, they are so, so, so happy together. And she realizes who she really is. I guess to go perform on her own and do her own thing and be amazing and stay true to herself and her values and her core philosophies and principles and have such an insane, insane, insane level of growth and personal development, all because she took the outside perspective of a friend to heart. And she gave her just one chance to prove that what she was saying was true. And the instant that she did, everything changed for her and became a huge, huge, huge reality at the dream level, the top performance she could possibly desire. All came from her quality friendship with her friend, not you know some crap with some guy who's just trying to take advantage of her. So definitely make sure you're trying yourself with the right people who are gonna guide you on the right paths and get you to this level of growth. Um, that just happened, which is super, super, so powerful. Um, and it, it inspires so, so many um, to go to succeed just like this. This is awesome.